Well, we're very pleased to be able to be with everybody tonight. It's always a good thing for us to get together. And even though this is not like being personally together, it's still a good time in the midst of the week to enjoy what we can of one another and the study of God's word together. I want to speak a little while this evening on disappointments in life. If you define the word disappoint, you'll see that it means fail to meet expectations. Failing to meet expectations. Now, each one of us expects certain things. We can see a little bit of a failure to meet expectations tonight by the problem of Ken's microphone getting a sound to it. That nobody can find out exactly where it's coming from. Well, that's a kind of a constant failure with computers. And there's always something. It also, if you look up disappointment, you'll see that it has to do with frustration. So we need not think that the more faithful to Christ we are means less disappointment. That's just not the case. Life is filled with mountains and valleys. Some of those mountains aren't very tall. Some of the valleys aren't very deep. But that's the way life is. One man told me one time, he said, well, when we're getting over a problem, it's just getting us ready to meet another one. And that's about right. And Satan knows that. That's the point I want to make this evening. Satan knows all these things. He knows more than that how to use them to weaken our faith and even cause people to lose their faith. So well, these things come on a daily basis, and that's one reason the Lord said, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. When we meet the evils of the day that the devil throws at us with the thus saith the Lord, then we're ready for whatever comes later. And each person, I'll say it this way, of a sound mind, won't live very long before encountering disappointments of one kind or another, or to one degree or another. It's how we deal with those disappointments. They're coming. And I think everyone listening to me now has gone through those disappointments. Um, if one is disappointed, then he really or she is more vulnerable to sins of omission and commission. I've seen people, because they became disappointed, Somebody or something, somewhere or the other, failed to meet what they expected of them. And we'll see why that's a problem in a little bit. But they just simply threw in the towel, as we want to say, or gave up. We need to know then something about these things and draw some lessons from the Bible on facing uh, disappointments, whether they're bitter disappointments or not so bitter. First of all, and I've already touched on this, Satan does not tell us the full truth about worldly pleasure. We said most often that we live in a world, especially in our United States of America today, that emphasizes more and more and more worldly pleasures. Now, worldly pleasures have always been here. They've always been a source for the devil to use to disappoint us and to get us to sin. But we have a concerted effort in America today to cause people to rejoice in whatever the flesh has to offer. And a lot of folks have it pretty easy compared to history. A lot of folks have good paying jobs. They have protection in various ways, and they don't necessarily have any this, that, or the other that has plagued most people and still does stay in a lot of countries as far as causing them trouble. So they don't have any time for God. Back what need do they have of God? I've often thought that, and I continue to think it even more so now, if some people aren't wondering if they even think about going to heaven, if heaven's going to be as good as here. Well, that kind of thing can happen. 
but when Satan causes us to focus on those worldly things, then you're going to encounter some terrible disappointments. Truth of the matter is that if you look at worldly people, people who give no thought to God, people who live for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, who try to do everything as they please, that is, they're partaking of worldly pleasures, well, I assure you, they encounter disappointments on a regular basis. I think it's been expressed in an old song and an old saying that all that glitters is not gold. Well, even a worldly person understands that. But why should one pose that saying unless they realize this world is full of disappointments? Even though they still keep striving after happiness and peace of mind in this present world. Those who choose to live sinful lifestyles really would have all of us believe they're just the happiest folks on earth. But they face all kinds of disappointments, deceit lies, various kinds of degrees of diseases, or oh, a guilty conscience. A guilty conscience is something that can really work on a person. And it can, over a period of time, even bring about physical maladies. Then there are those down deep fears. You know, God has set eternity in man's heart. And he can cry out all day long, there is no God. All that we have is right now. But there's that nagging fear from that eternity that God's set in his heart. That he's going to have to come before his God to give an account of the deeds done in the body, and he's just not ready to do so. It's there, and it works on you. It's not going to produce peace. It's not going to produce happiness or contentment. It will produce misery. That's one thing that Satan then would have us not realize is the truth about those who try to seek strictly and only worldly pleasure. Second thing is, is that great men, great men of faith and women, of course, have done battle with the same thing we do, disappointment. Things have failed to meet their expectations. But the thing about the men like this and the women like this is that the Bible records those who face these things because they're human beings, but especially because they love God and keep his commandments, and they overcame them. That's the marvelous message of God's word. There's a way to overcome all these disappointments. The apostle Paul, I suppose, as did all the apostles, underwent about as much disappointment as anybody could. On their first preaching tour, you remember that John Mark turned back on them. We read that and pass over, but you know, that was a great disappointment to Paul. You can see that in, in the second missionary journey as they're getting ready to go. He did not want to take him with him. That is John Mark. And that's found, of course, in the book of Acts 12, verse 25, and chapter 15, 38 through 39. But I think the greatest thing looking at Paul, and you can see it even in the record Luke gives and passages I just mentioned, he didn't let those disappointments stop him from doing what he knew the Bible taught. In other words, regardless of how many John Marks leaving them from Pamphylia alone, happened, it didn't stop Paul from doing what was right because the right wasn't in the person who disappointed him. And I think this is a very vital lesson for everybody that would be true Christians today. It's one that you must learn or you'll lose your faith. You'll find, too, that Paul dealing with his own countrymen, the Jews, of course, had great disappointment as far as they were concerned. Paul loved them to the point that it had been possible, he says, you know, if it were possible, which of course it wasn't, for him to have his own soul accursed, if they would all be saved, he would do it. 
all that was was just one of these cases to where it says, I love them very much. And regardless of how they reject me and persecute me, I still would have them saved. And we see in Acts 14, 19, some of what happened with Paul and why he would be disappointed because of the Jews' opposition. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, threw him out of the city, supposing he had been dead, Acts 14, verse 19. Well, just think of all the other perils that he lists, that he underwent. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 28. I won't try to read all of those now, but if you care to do that, maybe when you're feeling down and out because of disappointment, you need to go back and read 2 Corinthians 11, 23 and 28. I remember one time when I got to be good friends with a veterinarian who worked right across the parking lot from where we lived when I was in Muskogee. And I liked medicine a little bit. So I started going over there and got to be good friends with him. And as time went on, even helped on some surgeries when I could, as far as holding this and holding that and whatever else. I remember him, I guess you'd call it colloquially speaking, belly aching about this little thing and that little thing and that little thing. And it went on for a while and I listened. I said, would you uh, wait a minute and hold out your hands and let me look at them? And he looked kind of peculiar at me, but I've been used to that. So he held out his hands and I said, you know, I don't see a nail scarred in them. What, what do you have to worry about? What do you have a problem? I don't see a nail scar there. And that has worked very well in a lot of ways in handling a lot of things. Now, I don't know where he is today, but I did a lot of preaching as I could over that operating table and eventually baptized his, himself and his wife. As I say, I don't know where they are today. Lost contact with them a long time ago. May not even be faithful. But people can disappoint you, and he was letting some things disappoint him. And even though, and I think we have to all agree, Paul was a great man of faith. Even though he was unjustly imprisoned, he could still write in prison to the saints at Philippi, rejoice in the Lord always, Philippians 4, 4. Well, there were a lot of things that disappointed Paul, but you can see that he just did not allow them to get him down. I think that's the key to this. As we said in the beginning, everybody suffered disappointments. Some of them are harder to deal with. But remember Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first of the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That last part there should help us get over our being disappointed with people in situations. And usually it's people because people keep, create situations that aren't good. And that is, and all these things shall be added unto you. A guarantee from our Lord, and he doesn't go back on his promises is that if we will from the heart obey the truth, knowing that the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments, he's saying to us, I'll take care of the rest. And that's a good, good point to keep in mind. So we need to climb over and go around or do something like that, whatever disappoints us, as we strive to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, Matthew 5. Third point I want to make is the Christian is aware of the truth. And this ties back into what I just said, that the Lord will not forsake him. Far too many times in this life we rely on fellow humans when we should be relying on God. Every member of the Lord's body must make sure they absolutely know where their faith is. Now, that may sound strange that I would say that, but let me demonstrate this point by asking several questions. Is your faith in a near and dear friend? Is it in a favorite preacher? 
Is it in a great Bible class teacher? Is it in your mother or father or some other family member? Is that where your faith is? Well, if it is, it's in the wrong people. Our faith must be in God and his system of salvation. It is God that we worship. It is God that we serve. It is God by obedience to the truth that we glorify, Matthew 4.10. If our faith is not in him, then anybody, if we put too much confidence in them, can disappoint us and we begin to lose our faith. But I think I've known a number of brethren over the years who had so many hardships, or at least they considered them that, that they just said, what's the use? Our faith then must be in heaven and all that pertains to heaven as the Bible declares it, Romans 10, 17, and not in the world in which we live. Our Lord and God will never disappoint us. Now, he'll put us through things or allow us to go through things because we need them to make us stronger. Even when people and whatever disappoint us, if we hold to the unchanging hand of God's infallible word, we're stronger for having gone through that. And in closing, I want to point out that the writer of Hebrews supplies us with, I think, a most comforting, encouraging thought that takes away disappointment. He said, let your conversation, meaning let your manner of life, your conduct, be without covetousness. Now listen to him. And be content with such things as you have. For, notice how he bases it in the promises of the Lord. For he hath said, I will in no wise fail you. Neither will I in any wise forsake thee. Hebrews 13, 5. Now, did he mean what he said? And did he say what he meant? Well, to the faithful child of God, we know the answer to that. So while I love my brethren, like the Bible says I ought to, and I hope to love them even more, I can't let my faith be in them. It must be in God. Is Christ the gospel system in the Bible? And he will never forsake us. He'll never walk away from us. He may let us go through things that will make us stronger, and he will. But the word of God, remember, does not change regardless of the disappointments. So we conclude by saying we must remember that disappointments are going to come in life. Both the righteous and the unrighteous will suffer disappointment. And we will disappoint ourselves. Now, I didn't mention much about that, but I suppose some of the greatest disappointments a person can have is becoming disappointed in himself. Think of Peter after he denied the Christ. And Christ looked at him. Scripture says he went out and wept bitterly. You talk about disappointment. But the truth of God's the same even for people who are disappointed in themselves. He's still with us. He'll still forgive us. He'll still receive us. In heaven, throughout eternity, there are no tears. There are no death. There's no mourning. There's no crying. There's no pain. There is no disappointment. Revelation 21 4. So, as Christians, then we look toward our heavenly home. It makes our hope more desirable, a greater hope, a place where disappointment will never exist and cannot enter. So I hope this has been helpful, just in a practical way that all of us have to face disappointment. Don't let it get you down. Pick up and keep going on. Thank you.